season one, episode one of Lockdown and Listen. We're here in Rotterdam. We just arrived, myself and Finnegan and the crew. And we're going to meet a, a poet, a storyteller, a man who kind of does his own thing and runs his own festival here in Rotterdam, Elton. He's meeting us at halfway up on Tram 8 and we're going to chat to him about being a social animal, how to stay connected to the people that we love when we're told to not really connect in reality, but more so connect online. So let's go meet Elton. I think our train ticket will last for the tram, right? Hey Elton! Hello! Hey, I'm Joe! Nice to meet you, Nice man. to meet you, this is Finnegan. Hey, Miss Finnegan! <laughs> so tell me, um, would you say that you're more of a wordsmith, a poet, uh, a presenter? What do you do? Uh, I think I'm more like a combination of uh, somebody who enjoys life. Good. And loves to talk a lot. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes I'm uh, a host. Sometimes I'm a teacher. I'm always a talker. I write a lot. Yeah, so. And you have a festival that you organize? Yeah, a platform. Together with my, uh, my uh, good friend of mine, Wesley Lowe's, we're organizing uh, this platform called uh, Words Become Sentences, Word of Word is in okay, for nice. uh, almost 11 years now, man. But yeah, let's, let's say 10 years because last year is more like... A pause. Yeah, a little a, pause. Yeah, a little yeah, break yeah. and everything. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And so today we're talking about being a social animal. Would you consider yourself a social animal? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can we ask you some questions from Ezrab? Can we ask you some questions from Ezrab, the home of storytelling? I'll yeah. leave for the lake. <laughs> now, my name is Elton. Ich bin Joseph, this is Finnegan. Finnegan, <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> what, what, what is your name? Mirel. Oh, Mirel. Vraag number one. Yeah. Would you consider yourself a social animal? Yes. Yes? yes. How come? Uh, because I think it's important for people to interact and learn from each other and and have fun with each other and and yeah i i i don't think i would survive this whole epidemic without my friends and and my family would you call yourself a social animal social um uh, not so much no 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 <laughs> So you were saying that you lived in Amsterdam for 30 years, which is amazing, and now you live in Rotterdam. And have you been here for all of lockdown? Yeah. And do you think it's possible to stay in touch with people and have enriching connections if you're not allowed to go and physically meet them? Well, the thing is I work four days a week. Oh, great. So I'm in touch with people no matter how. You know, it's my job. Yeah. In private time, I like to be uh, uh, solitaire. Because you still have that social connection at work four days a week. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Gorgeous. So you have the balance. You have both. You have like alone time and people time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And would you prefer <laughs> more alone time or more people time? More long time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's difficult. Uh, I've, I've had the same struggle as well because I think you meet new people mostly when you do something that you really like, that you're really interested in. Uh, do you think yeah. it's possible to fall in love uh, or to make new friends? I, I fell in love. Uh, I have a new girlfriend. Oh yeah? Yeah, it all happened. Yeah, yeah, it happened. How did you meet? Uh, <laughs> 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 it's gonna be on camera, right? <laughs> <I can't laughs> tell me, tell me. I've just met you, and I want to oh, know how you met yeah, your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Those lovely people eating lunch. Those, I'd say those other people eating lunch would definitely chat to us. Are they still, are they still having lunch? I want them to finish their snack. Oh. So we descend upon them. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Could we ask you a couple of questions for Mezrab, the home of storytelling in Amsterdam? Sure. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Did you, you find love in the last year or new friendships? Yeah, well, actually, actually just like last week I made a new friend, a guy from England, because I was applying for this English school and he was all the older in the office. He said, oh, you want to come by for coffee? I said, sure. Connor from Manchester, he was called. And uh, we went there and we talked for two and a half hours about music and all, all kinds of stuff. Nice. And uh, it was just the two of us. Since then, we've been good friends, actually. Well, since a week or so. Okay. So, uh, and do you think yeah. you've had to make any sacrifices this last year? No, I think not so much either, because I'm a florist. So uh, in this country, I'm allowed to work as a florist, like normally, on a normal basis. So mm. I think I'm also quite lucky, I would say. And were you working in the florist this weekend? 
Yes, yeah, exactly. I did. Yeah. <laughs> so I've lived in the Netherlands for I think seven years and the thing I love the most is the, the flower industry. Yeah. And I went to my, my local florist who I love the other day yeah. and I was on Saturday, I was like, where are like your bouquets that you normally make up and I can just pick one? Yeah. And they're like, it's Valentine's weekend. We're busy, we're exhausted. Yeah. I'm sorry we didn't make the bouquets. <laughs> and I was looking at her going like, I'm so sorry, of course you're busy. So how busy were you this weekend? Oh my God. Look at the hands, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my oh, thank you all for your time and I'm going to say where can people buy your art so they can support you? Well on my website which is <laughs> www.vincentdehan.com And where Vincent can people buy your flowers? Well, um, well actually I just quit from my job <laughs> After Valentine's Weekend! Oh, they work so hard! No, that's true, uh, I, I haven't been able to hug my mom for like Ooh. a year and it's... Oh. I see that it's really difficult for her as well because she tells me every time like oh I wish I could give you a hug but mm. I just I don't want to risk it. It's a big sacrifice uh, yeah, out of love. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Okay. But I must know what is the Dorito plan? Oh, well, uh, I saw it was in the bonus so I was like <laughs> I'm going to treat myself. <laughs> Good so. Yes, as it should be. Of course. You have to treat yourself. Sometimes. <laughs> and what was your name? Meryl. Meryl, yeah. Meryl. I'm yeah. Joseph, Elton, oh, nice Finnegan, <laughs> Alexis and Anastasis. Really nice. So, yeah, it was lovely to talk to you. And please yeah. check us out on Mesra. Yeah. So you know that February is Black History Month? Yeah. Can you tell us a really quick story about what Black History Month means to you, if anything at all? Um, yeah, we, we, we celebrate strength. We celebrate change. We celebrate those stories who aren't, aren't been told yet. All the stories, those are forgotten. I think it's very important and the beautiful thing about this, this History Month is also the Black History Month is that it's, it's getting bigger and more important uh, every year. We've never been at this point of awareness before. It's positive. Yeah, and hopefully it'll spill over February and go year round and we'll have these yeah. stories more visible all of the time. Okay, cool. And who is your absolute hero? Oh, Vinegar! Yeah, right? <laughs> Give me a social distance fist bump. I will see you in Mesrab soon for a story, I hope. Definitely, definitely. I'll be there. See okay. you guys in the future. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>